Hello and welcome to the European Open Briefing for Friday, March the 22nd. This is Marius Hatsikirakos, Investment Analyst at XM, and we are going to be looking at the latest developments in the financial markets today. Let's kick off with the US dollar, which was by far the best performing major currency on Thursday and is extending those gains early on Friday. There was no real news out of the US or any significant economic data, so this rebound in the dollar seems owed mainly to some weakness in other major currencies, specifically in the euro and the British pound. In terms of the euro, the single currency plunged earlier today after Germany's preliminary manufacturing PMI for March disappointed, falling even further into contractionary territory. This is significant, Firstly, because Germany is the largest economy in the euro area, and secondly, because this weakness suggests that economic growth may have slowed even further in the first quarter. Not to mention, it also increases the likelihood that the ECB adds even more stimulus this year, which spells downside risks for the euro moving forward. In the UK, The pound fell substantially but managed to recover some of its losses after the EU offered a short extension to Brexit until April 12. That could be extended even further if the UK Parliament approves Theresa May's deal. But if it doesn't, it will either be a no-deal Brexit on April 12 or the UK will have to get a much longer extension of nearly two years. So where does this leave the pound? Considering that the possibility of a no-deal exit remains very much alive, the risks around the British currency seem tilted to the downside over the next weeks, especially since May's deal will probably be rejected again. Turning to the broader market, US stocks moved higher yesterday following some reports that Trump simply wants China to purchase more US goods in order to strike a trade deal. So specifically, Trump wants China to double or triple its offer on goods. These are good news because if these reports are true, then a deal is actually very likely over the coming months. China has already shown several times it has no problem buying more US goods, but it doesn't want to make deep structural changes to its economy. Therefore, if the main issue is how many goods China will buy, then a solution will probably be easy to find. As for today's events, the only major data points left on the economic calendar are Canada's inflation and retail sales figures, while in the US, the preliminary market PMIs could also attract some attention. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.